It's not just about bragging rights. Slipping in the United Nations Human Development Index ranking is sparking some worry about the future of this country. For the first time, Canada is not one of the top 10 countries. But we're not getting worse. Rather, other countries are getting better. But shouldn't a rising tide, as they say, lift all boats? Let's bring in someone who can speak to that. William Orm is the head of communications for the UN Development Report. He joins me now from the United Nations in New York. So, William Orm, you know, this is going to come as a shock to a lot of Canadians who are watching. For many years, Canada was ranked number one on this index in the 1990s. Then there was a little bit of a slip. But the idea that this country is not even in the top 10, it certainly shocked a lot of Canadians to hear that today. How did that happen? I'm learning about the shock, and you just said absolutely the right thing at the beginning. First, it's not that Canada is declining in any meaningful way, but there are some countries that are progressing more quickly. The actual ranking is based on what we call a human development index value, which is a hard number, uh, which is calculated on the basis of the three components of the index, which are health, education, and income. And that number shows Canada actually did improve from 2011 to 2012. But when you go from 11, from 10 to 11, all that means is that one other country improved a little bit more. So it improved a little bit more. And tell us a little bit about what factors are considered when you determine a country's actual rating. The index was, was originally conceived as a readily intelligible alternative to gross domestic product to monitor a country's development progress that put equal weight on health and education as well as on income, on per capita national income. So that's what it measures, uh, that and nothing more. And for health, we don't measure quality of health care. We're just simply measuring life expectancy because that's the one reliable number we can get from all countries that's trustworthy. And with education, it's a very simple thing. It's not quality of education either. It's just, and it's not a small thing, it's the years of schooling that the current adult population over 25 already has had in the likely years of schooling that a kid entering primary school at the age of five or six can be expected to have in a given country. I hope you won't take any offense to this, but I'm just going to be speaking what I think a lot of Canadians will be thinking. When we look at the United States, uh, yeah. when it comes to health care, when it comes to education, a uh, serious uh, economic decline, much, much, much higher than Canada. Is it number four in this ranking? I believe it's number four in the ranking, Canada number 11. Canadians shake their heads and say, how is that possible that this index has got to, it has to have it wrong? Well, first, let me stress that the difference between even number one and number 15 in this ranking at the top is minuscule. I mean, if you look at closely at our rankings, between 11 and 10, this is, you know, we're talking because of the concern you've dropped out of the top 10. The difference between number 11, Canada, and number nine, Japan, is one thousandth of a percentage point. It's, it's almost insignificant. And even going up to the way to the United States, you're talking less than a hundredth of a percentage point. So, all countries that are in that top 15 or so spaces are doing well in human development. They're not really that different from each other, frankly. Now, the United States versus Canada, there's a slightly higher per capita income in the United States, which is a factor. And there's a slightly higher number of, of uh, people of the, the, uh, who are in university who are of that age group, that you know, 18 to 23 or 24 age group. It's not a huge difference, but it's slight, and it makes a difference. The opposition uh, in this country is saying that this fall in ranking is an indication of a growing gap in income uh, in Canada. Is that a fair assessment? Is that a concern? Or are there areas in which uh, this country, in Canada, should be focused on in order to maybe climb back up? Uh, it is not fair, frankly, and it, and it should not be a concern. As I said, Canada's human development achievement has actually increased and continues to increase. That a couple of countries have increased more quickly um, doesn't mean that Canada isn't doing well. I mean, quality of life is very high in Canada. Health care standards are very high. Educational standards are high. And incomes are good. Now, in terms of distribution, uh, what's interesting, actually, is that when you correct these numbers for distribution, the United States, which is number four, drops way down below Canada. Um, because there is much greater disparity, not just in terms of income, but also in terms of life expectancy and in educational achievement across the population of the United States than you find in Canada, which is where things are actually more equitable. 
we're just about out of time, but I wanted to ask you this one last question. The report is dubbed The Rise of the South, Human Progress in a Diverse uh, World. T talk to us a little bit about uh, any lessons that we can take from Southern nations, because uh, in, in many respects, are you pleased with what we're seeing in, in some developing countries in terms of a rise out of poverty? Absolutely. We have seen hundreds, literally hundreds of millions of people uh, rising out of poverty in just the last 10 years or so. And this is largely due to the fast growth. And you would expect, you know, China and India, obviously, because of their sheer size and scale. But this is a generalized phenomenon. We've identified more than 40 countries in the developing world that are doing extraordinarily well in human development progress, and they're actually accelerating their progress. And they're increasingly becoming functionally middle class countries. We are calculating that by you know, 2030, there will be something like 5 billion people that you could define as middle class in the world. Obviously, that puts a strain on the environment. There's a lot of other issues that have to be dealt with. But overall, this is good news. Human progress doesn't mean that because somebody else is up, somebody else is down. We all win. All right, William, thank you very much. William Orm is the head of communications for the UN Development Report. He joined me from the United Nations in New York.